Welcome to Greenland. It's not green. The world's largest island contains the world's second biggest ice sheet, only behind Antarctica. It contains the northernmost land in the world, and the temperature there has reached negative 93 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 70 degrees Celsius. Yet, even in this extreme climate, 56,000 people still live here. It's not easy managing 56,000 people, especially in a democracy. So what is this system? And how is this barren wasteland governed? Greenland is an autonomous country that's part of the Kingdom of Denmark. Basically, it means that Greenland is an independent country that just so happens to be owned by Denmark. It has three branches of government, much like the US, a legislative branch, an executive branch, and a judicial branch. Let's start with the judicial branch. There are four district courts, the Court of Greenland and the High Court of Greenland. The district courts are called Ek, Ekartu, Ekartu Siso Karfik in Greenlandic. The Court of Greenland is called Kalali Tnunani Ekartu Sivik, and the High Court of Greenland is Kalali Tnunani Ekartu Sisu Nikarfik. Have fun laughing at my pronunciation in the comments. This court system is a lot like the United States court system. You start in one of the district courts, and if you lose, you can appeal to a higher court, the Court of Greenland, and if you lose there, you can appeal to the highest court in the land, the High Court of Greenland. The High Court's decision is final. There's no appealing to any further court. Next, there's a legislative branch. In Greenlandic, it's the Inatsisartu. There's only one house, that's called a unicameral legislature, and Greenland gets two seats in the Danish parliament, the Folketing. As of 2021, the Siumit, Nunata and the Democrats make up the government alliance. They're the ruling alliance, they have 17 seats in total. The opposition? They're the Inuit Atikotikit, Parti Nerlak, Atasa, and the Cooperation Party. They have 14 seats. Basically, the government alliance promotes closer ties to Denmark, and the opposition alliance promotes separating itself from Denmark, or even independence. Each member of parliament, or MP, is elected to a four-year term. The next legislative elections in Greenland will take place next year, in 2022. Now, on to the executive branch. This is where Denmark's control really shows. The head of the executive branch is the High Commissioner of Greenland. They're appointed by the Monarch of Greenland, right now that's Queen Marguerite II. The High Commissioner is basically Greenland's all-powerful dictator. Actually, that's a lie. The High Commissioner, in reality, is basically powerless. The Prime Minister, or Premier, has the most power. They're usually the head of the alliance that has the most seats in Parliament. As of January 2021, the Prime Minister is Kim Kielsen. Now, down to its subdivisions. These are like the 50 United States, though there are only five. These five administrative divisions are Avanata, the capital of which is Ilulisat, Kajalik, capital is Kakortak, Kakertalik, the capital of that is Asiat, Kaketa, the capital of that is Sisimiat, and Sermersuk, the capital of that is Nuuk. Additionally, there's an open region called Northeast Greenland National Park. It's unincorporated, which basically means that there's no government. It's the largest national park in the world. Sermersuk is by far the most populous division, holding about half of Greenland's entire population. Each subdivision is treated like a city with a mayor. Every time there's an election, people living all across Greenland, even the Inuit who live in small, tight-knit communities, travel to the nearest polling booth and cast their votes. Now, is this way of governing effective for Greenland? That's subjective. Government is the largest employer in Greenland. This isn't just law enforcement, military, and political work. The government also owns a conglomerate called KNIAS. This conglomerate owns many things, a textile company called Great Greenland, a chain of all-purpose general stores, and owns two airlines called Air Greenland and Royal Arctic. As of 2018, the government of Greenland employs over 11,000 people, or a little under half of Greenland's workforce. For reference, Greenland's population is about 56,000, and Greenland's workforce is about 27,000. About 9% of Greenland's working age population is unemployed. Greenland's second largest industry is the fishing industry, as is the case for many economies in the far north. Greenland's fishing fleet consists of about 5,000 dinghies, 300 cutters, and 25 trawlers. They mainly catch cold water shrimp and Greenland halibut. Processing the fish? That's done by Royal Greenland, which is owned by, surprise, the government-owned conglomerate KNIAS. As for whaling and seal hunting? Well, that's become controversial in recent years, so the government has limits there. For energy, Greenland has one of the highest renewable energy rates in the world, at about 70%. This is mainly through hydropower, though since there's not too many people in Greenland to supply energy with, that's mostly sufficient. 
Greenland has vast oil reserves, which led President Donald Trump to very publicly announce that he wanted to buy Greenland. He didn't. Tourism is a limited industry in Greenland. Its remote location and harsh weather limit visitations there to the short summer months, May to August. People there usually get by air, and the most tourists come from Denmark, America, Germany, and Sweden, all of which aren't very far away. The military? Well, Greenland doesn't have a military. It's protected by Denmark's army, and the United States Air Force has a base in Thule. It's not easy living in Greenland, but all of this makes it a bit easier. Be sure to subscribe and like, and thank you for watching Explained, new videos every other Friday.